morning guys, so it's May the 12th, so for anyone with ME, it's a really important day in the calendar. So today there's lots of protests and events and uh, awareness building going on um, all throughout the world. And there's a protest going on in London today. I've never been able to make it down before, but today I haven't got anything on, so I really want to try and make it down and just add to the noise and add to the numbers and just be part of, you know, trying to get people to listen, fund, um, do the research that's needed basically for all of us. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel great today. I've struggled this week a lot because I pushed it a bit too hard one particular day um, when I went to London this week and um, oh, my legs have really been struggling as a result and I couldn't sleep last night barely at all just because they were so painful um, but I'm going to have a bath, I'm going to fill it with Epsom salts, I've got my magnesium spray and I'm whacking some painkillers and then hopefully it'll be fine I can definitely just go for a bit at least um so yeah bath first oh my god see if the cat's on the way first oh look who it is round three little poppet here you can hey poppet how are you we had Rosie the cockapoo here yesterday unfortunately Roundtree came to the door and Rosie saw her and then went mad. So we, we thought Roundtree might be scared for life and now they come back. But you're a brave little soldier, aren't you? Aren't you? Back in his favourite box. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, yes. You just feel safe in there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so I printed off one of the um, posters from the Facebook group. They have lots of different ones you could choose, and they um, they have lots of uh, things that you can print off. Um, ways you can change your headers on your social media just to spread the word. So there's lots of things people can do from home, even if they can't make it down to any of the protests themselves. And I've gone for this one because I think this is what we really, really need to make the steps that we need to make sure people are getting the treatment they need and people aren't being made worse by trying, you know, treatments that are based on guesswork or non-truths. So I think this is what I'm, my message is today, really. This is what I really want to push for. I've decided I'm definitely going to go. I feel like I owe it to you guys at home because I know there's so many of you that are feeling far worse than I am today that would love to be there and be part of it and feel the energy and be part of this movement and feel like, you know, you were there and your voice was being heard. So if I feel there's any chance I can get through it, I've got to go, haven't I? Because, yeah, I, I feel like I owe it to you guys. I want them to see that there's a lot of us, um, as many of us as possible. I want them to feel that weight of us, um, to push them to do something about all of this. And I am so aware of how lucky I am comparatively. Like, I know I'm not where I hoped or thought I would be by this point in my life, and life isn't what I imagined it would be. But from an outside perspective, at least, I have a fairly normal looking life. I have a partner, I have a roof over my head. It may be my parents, but it's still a safe roof over my head. Um, I can socialise, I can go out for meals, I do some work, you know, I'm very, very lucky, I'm very fortunate and I never forget that and the conversations I have with you guys that have more severe cases of ME who don't leave the house for days, weeks, months, years, you're a constant reminder of how grateful I should be but that doesn't mean that I don't get down about my personal situation and that I'm not in pain or that I'm not struggling with anything of course I am but it does help me maintain some perspective I guess and also make me want to fight a little bit harder for 
you guys that are dealing with more than I'm dealing with. If I'm well enough to write some tweets or spread the word about it, I should be doing that. If I can go to things like this, I should be doing that. If I can write a letter to an MP, definitely I should try and do that. Um, so I'm going to try and take some photos today, maybe try and get some footage, see if I can spread the word a bit more via social media. Um, and I figure because it's at BBC Broadcasting House today, that's quite a central area of London. So if I do get tired or if it gets a bit too much, I imagine it's going to be quite an emotional thing as well. Um, there's plenty of cafes and places to sit down, so that's good as well. And another reason why I should definitely just give it a go. Let's do this. silences us the most is shame and is stigma and is denial and our slurs that we you know we've all heard before in the media you know hysterical militant whatever it is and these are really effective forms of silencing people so what we need to do to combat that is really be proud in ourselves and in who we are as a community stand together and yeah Fight, fight for ourselves because we deserve it. So thank you very much. Years ago, and, and uh, this week, and I want to say thank you to millions of us and to everybody who's come here today because this is absolutely necessary. Maddie is now just over six stone in hospital, unable to eat, and. Can you guess who is in charge of her care in the hospital? A psychiatrist. And it is just a battle. Not only do you feel sad that you can't care for your child and, and make them better, but also you actually have to fight against the medical profession who don't take anything seriously. And it's only because of the charities, the only charities, that we've managed to get through this and we've managed to get some help from that. Hello everybody. My name is Kat. I am a mother of a 32 year old and also her carer. Well, along with my husband, is some back. 
Um, I think today, as the other gentleman said, it's very, very important for us all to make a stand to say that the National Health Service is not doing, never mind enough, it's not doing anything, really, to help the people who need it. There are a couple of statistics I've got here which have certainly surprised us. They may not surprise you. There is six times the amount of funding goes into male baldness than into ME. And whilst we all agree, I'm sure, that if you have MS, that too needs funding. However, there are 20 times the number of people who suffer from ME, CFS, and two and a half times the number of people suffer from ME than they do MS. So I think we need to make it very clear to our doctors, to our surgeons, to anybody who's in research, that we need that help. And if we all write to our MPs, we make our voices clear at doctors' surgeries, we need to do it, all of us. So a big thank you to everybody out there today. All the people who need to be here can't. I know my daughter would love to be here because she does get a lot of support through the ME Society. So again, thank you to everybody who's listening and let's get writing and let's get heard. Thank you. Apologise for the harm they have done over the last 30 years. 
The rest of the medical profession should examine why they have allowed this dreadful situation to happen. Why they allow, allow a group of very ill people to be stigmatised um, to such an extent that a diagnosis of ME means that no further tests or treatment are allowed. They have been lauded, given bravery prizes, positions of power and honours. People with them may be cowed into silence, harmed by treatments, bed-bound, tube-fed and abandoned. They've seen their ill children threatened with social services if they don't comply with treatment that makes them worse. Denied education, help, compassion and understanding. We say, no more. We will be heard. It's time for the millions missing to take their place and demand change. We demand biomedical research. We demand that NICE withdraw CBT and get a new degree. We demand that the clinics treat ME as a bio the biomedical illness that it is. We are the millions missing and we won't be silent anymore. Research for any, um, because at the moment we've got people suffering and having their childhoods taken away from them, having their, their whole lives taken by this disease, and we're currently we are missing. And I'm just one of those millions missing, and, and I'm doing this for so many other people who can't make it today, who are too ill in bed. I've got a poem to write to read to you that I wrote because I don't know what else I can say to you other than how amazing it is that you've all come. So this is called The Streets of London. When you walk through the streets of London and see those empty shoes, they you hear the silent whispers of those certain millions missing too. Yes, millions, that's right. The doctors, lawyers, actors and teachers Today and tomorrow, even today. They do look on the stand, how they may not choose the form. The culprit being my adjunct in the form of my writing. Is that all you may have said? When you walk through the streets of London and see those empty shoes, may you know that this monster does not discriminate. It doesn't care about the slightest quote, if you're rich or poor, or even a friend or foe. Instead, it tears apart dreams for women and men alike, which are trapped inside the people's people, bound by diseases such as the women out of life. When you walk through the streets of London and see the empty shoes, then they represent who want to be there too. One that's still suffering, trying to help, yet still there and not going. Some are fallen angels now, yet still the battle continues. Acknowledging to the cure, but asking you for the more. When you walk through the streets of London and see those empty shoes, remember those that national pain that have kept the life of the world again and again. For the evening of the fact that the two of you hear our names, we know we are isolated from society, the plight of our loved ones that go on to tell our stories, our hopes, and the people we cherish. London, can you come and find me and sign for your constituency and we'll take it from there. Thank you. rather abruptly yesterday so I'll just fill you in I, I managed to stay quite a long time at the um, at the protest protest about an hour and a half all in all um, um, but by that point because I was filming whenever I film things that really tires me out because obviously you have to have your hands above your head which is always quite a difficult thing for, I think probably for most people but I find it really difficult 
and um yeah obviously just being on your feet and just it was really damp as well and i always find damp weather my muscles um tend to get really um achy and um seize up but um i was quite pleased i felt like i was there long enough to you know properly experience it and um you know i i left feeling quite obviously i felt emotionally drained um but I also felt really proud of the community. Um, like, even people that aren't physically strong, they're being so strong and fighting. And and their loved ones, the, just the effort and the passion and the support. I don't know, it was just quite a, yeah, emotional but warming experience. And um, it just felt nice to be reminded that we have such an amazing community and we are genuinely never alone um although all our situations are very different very unique uh, different severities different coming from different places different financial backgrounds different everything different um <laughs> we are united in this you know determination to get the people that should be listening to listen and um Hopefully soon that will start happening. Sorry, I'm not going to talk very um, articulately uh, because my brain's a bit of a pickle today. Um, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. The reason I was able to justify doing yesterday was because I knew that I wouldn't have to commute both ways because Sai was doing one of his markets in London Fields um, yesterday. So I knew I'd be able to get a lift back. So I thought, I'm only doing one commute into London on the train. So I... I can do this. So when I left the protest, I then got the train to Liverpool Street, but then got there and found out there were no trains. By that point, I was so tired and uncomfortable. And then the train guy was really unhelpful, saying, oh, you just have to get a bus. Because I don't live in London. I didn't know, you know, what bus, where to pick it up. And he just wasn't very helpful. And that by that point, I was having issue toilet issues. Um, and then I went to find the loo, which was obviously downstairs, as they always are, um, and realised I didn't have any change, so I couldn't get into those loos. So then went to the disabled loo, and there was someone in there, and I couldn't find anyone to help me with that anyway. So then went to a pub, um, f finally started to relax, because I thought I'd be able to go, and there was a big queue, because I forgot it's a Saturday. And then I went to another place, similar thing, and I just started to panic. And then I just, yeah, I didn't know what to do. Then I, I luckily, a bus came. I said, are you going there? They went, yeah. And then I was like, got my money out. He's like, oh, you can't pay like that. You need a pass. And I didn't have an Oyster card with me. So then I just broke down in tears because I was just so stressed about that. I thought I was going to have an accident. I was so exhausted. And in my head, I mentally had kind of thought, I'm going to be in a car soon, just sitting on my way home. And all these things that had come my way that I wasn't prepared for, that were, like, stressful and exhausting. So, yeah, I had a little bit of a wobble. Luckily, the guy on the um, bus was really nice and made sure I got to where I needed to get to. But I think, actually, it was a, just a reminder of just the little everyday things that you take for granted that when you're not feeling well are suddenly such a monumental task and so difficult and... Um, overwhelming I guess um I don't know why I'm emotional I'm just so tired I'm just so glad I went because I met a lovely girl called Lara as well we swapped details so we're now following each other on Instagram and as soon as I arrived to the protest obviously I didn't know what to expect but as soon as I got there this lovely kind fellow offered me a seat um and which was undercover from the rain as well yeah, I'm really glad I went. Um, and like I said, because I speak to so many of you guys that are bed bound and and would have loved to have been there. Um, I was doing it for you guys as much as myself. And um, I just wanted to try and get some photos and footage so you could um, try and watch it back via this vlog and, you know, kind of feel the vibe of the day. Um I learned a lot as well, actually, like some of those statistics, which you will have just heard, are just really shocking, like how much more money is being spent on male pattern baldness. 
I've been wanting a cure for baldness because for some partners of mine that have lost their hair and stuff. That's something I've thought about before. But when it comes to that or finding a cure for this sort of illness, obviously it's a no-brainer and it just blows my mind that that's actually happening. Another thing that really gets me is obviously we need to channel as much energy in, in as possible into trying to stay well and stay positive and maybe use our little energy supplies to communicate whether it be online or in person or do the things that make us happy or venture out the house or you know maybe just survive the day and yet we're having to use our energy supplies to write letters to politicians to um go for a doctor appointment after doctor appointment because people won't listen to go for tests that we know aren't going to help us to, to go to tribunals to like argue um our rejection from pip to reapply for pip and fill out form after form it's just we're the last people that should be doing this and it's the last thing we need and yet we have to use our depleted energy reserves to do this stuff to to get anywhere it's just it's just so wrong on so many levels. Anyway, let's try and leave on a positive note. To be proud of our community. I, in a way, I wish it wasn't so big because I don't want this many people to be dealing with this and not getting the help they deserve. But at least we have power in numbers to hopefully force a change as soon as possible. Keeping everything crossed and I'm going to try and carry on doing my bit. Um... Anyway, I know this vlog's been really long and I know it's probably not going to be interesting for all of my um, audience, but I hope for the few that do uh, share an interest in this, I hope it's it's brought something to you. Um, I'm going to go now because I'm not sure any of this has made sense. <laughs> Bye for now and lots of love. I'm going to get some rest now.